Okay, so let's start looking at some of the other marks that you can create with D3. So, as we mentioned on the theory, you can create points, lines, and areas. And for lines and areas, we mentioned before that you can use D3 pad. Uh, D3 pad basically is just a set of commands that you can use for generating pad, um, how to call it, uh, like uh, SVG commands. So, the way this works is that remember that if you create an HTML uh, element or an SVG element, right? And then inside that, oops, let's try to come back here. So let's try again. So SVG, and then if inside that SVG, you go and start saying that you want to create a path, then uh, remember that that path can have an attribute that it um, can be a series of commands. So you can say this is going to have from zero to 100, 100, and then uh, very important, give it a color. So you say stroke, and then you say what color, and then uh, that's going to start creating your show. So um, then you can say, I also want to create another line that goes to 200, uh, 200. That's too low, let's say 200, zero. And then you get this. So if you don't change anything, the default is that you have a fill uh, that is going to be black in this case. So if you only want a line, then you just need to remove this. So you can go and look at the documentation for this. Uh, it's quite nice. You can create other things like, for instance, let's say this one that should create like a curve, as you can see in there. So you can go and write all of these by yourself, like in earlier versions of D3, actually people will write that thing. But uh, an alternative is actually to use a command called D3 line, that it's a line generator. So what this thing does is that, let's say, um, that I'm going to create a line. And then uh, the key of this is that if I just call a line with a set of elements, let's say, for instance, um, something like an array that starts from 0, 0, and then goes to 100, 100, and then goes to 200, 0 then that is going to generate something very similar to what you have in here. So if you actually go and put the result of this, let's say that we call this generated, and then we just paste that in here, then that actually is going to create the line for you. And it's quite nice because like it, this responds to data, so you can modify it. So if you actually want to use that on a chart, what do you do? So I have some data loaded in here. Uh, this comes, so I have imported D3, uh, I have imported Vega data sets, and I imported the stocks data set. That it's a classical stock uh, data set that contains some stock prices for certain dates and with a price. I did some date formatting in here, so I'm going to look at that later when we look at time. But for the moment, what else do we have? We have like the basic template where we are creating an SVG with a view box, and then we are appending our G drawing, and then that's we are returning the SVG in here. We have our margin, and I created a couple scales. We have one scale for time, there's going to be an X that has a domain with the date, and we have another scale for Y that is a scale linear, um, and that's going to work with price. So if you go and you want to draw this, and actually let's create another scale here. Just remember, oh, but we are going to see that. So let's start drawing this. So if the normal way that you can draw this, like especially with what you've seen, is like, let's say that you're going to select all the points, then you do some data binding with my data, and then you say, I'm going to join this with a circle. Uh, since I'm selecting by class, then let me give it a class before I forget. And then inside that one, you can just start changing the position in X, that in this case is going to be uh, the D dot date passed by the scale. You can replicate the same thing uh, for Y. So in this case, it will be this and then price. And finally, I need to provide a radius. In this case, the radius is going to be um, static. So I'm just going to pass something like this. 
If you do that, then you can start seeing all of the points. Okay, so um, I can actually go, and that's the other scale I wanted to create. I can create a color scale that is going to be scale ordinal. In this case, let's see that I'm going to use a D3 skin accent, for instance, and then I just need to change the fill of this. So I can say that the fill of this will be D of color of the dot um, symbol. I think this is what they call it. Oops, oops, oops. Symbol. So as you can see in here, now we have things colored by a different symbol. Uh, that doesn't seem to show very well. Let's maybe use set two or something like that. Skin set two. Okay, that looks a little bit better. So now if I want to draw a line on that, and that's interesting because when you see, when you look at this, when you start thinking on how many points I showed in here, I have one point for each data entry. So I have a, like more than a 500 points in there. If you want to draw the lines, then thinking about how we generated that in here, notice how, notice how we generated one line out of like all of these points. So basically what we want, if we want to draw lines out of this, is that we want one for each one of the stock prices. So you will start creating the lines for this. Here, uh, basically what you were saying is that I want to create a line. Uh, let's say for the moment that we want the data, and then we want to generate paths, and then we want to be generating this line. So then we don't have radius or CX or CY. We do have a fill. Uh, but the only one we have in here is D. And then we have to pass what is the attribute that we're going to have for that. So remember that we had that generated one. So I could pass that generator and it generates this one. So actually because of that, let me right away change the stroke uh, to be none. And then, uh, then uh, change uh also the filling to have that color and then oh of course uh yes it's the opposite so i want the stroke uh sorry i want the stroke to be this one and the fill to be this one and then i have a line but i need to see to for the line to go through all of those elements so actually like the first thing is that i need like only five lines so i know it's five of them because i have five colors so Actually, we can go and search in Observable. Uh, Mike has a nice color legend that you can use uh, that is very quick. So if you see this one, then uh, it's just a matter of importing this and then um, putting that in here. You just do this one, although there is another one for um, categorical scales <coughs> so we can actually see the colors in here so it will be like swatches out of my color uh, like this so I have these five scales okay so I need five lines so how do I do that if I have 500 points well I should pass to this line that is the one for um, uh, Amazon I think I should pass for that one only the data points from Amazon so I could do something like this I could say um, that in here, in this, instead of using this, I'm going to use a new one. Let's call it uh, line 2. And then I'm going to create it in here. So line 2 equals D3 line. And then um, that one, I need to pass, like, let's say, for instance, let's, uh, that I'm going to pass the data. Like we could say something like this. Um, like all the data but only the ones that have uh, let's say for instance that the symbol equals um, msft something like this so uh by doing that then of course i'm not getting any ah okay so the line the problem is that this line is expecting values to come in a couple of arrays so i either can map that or I can pass like accessors for X and Y. And accessors for X and Y in here are going to be that for X, I'm going to use the dot date. 
and pass by, by the x. And for y, I'm going to use y of d dot pass. Again, you do that, and there we go. So now we have a line from Microsoft. But I don't want to repeat that for each one of those. So, and I'm actually repeating this for each data point. Uh, so if you actually take a look at the code in here, probably we will have also 500 lines. Um, if we can get to that, because we will have to pass through 500 circles. And then um, you will see, like you have like 600 more nodes in there. So actually you only want five. So instead of passing this, we could nest the data. We can group it. And then we can say the grouped data is going to be D3 groups of my data, but I want to group by uh, D dot symbol. So when I do that, I get this, I have the five elements. Notice that I use the S, so I actually get the, uh, the raises and the return, uh, like, a, like pairs or, or tuples, as you call them in, in Python. So now I have group data. So now this is going to be called five times. But instead of doing that, what I'm, I'm going to do is that I'm going to say, let's say this is a group. And then the line is going to be drawn not out of this, but uh, the line of group on the position one, because this is what is going to have that one. And then with that, I have a line for each one of those. And for the color, I'm not going to have the symbol anymore. Basically, what I'm going to have in here on my group, it's I'm going to have a group sub zero, something like this. And then I have colors for each one of those. If you want to draw the axis that I forgot in there, then you can also say append the gene and then do call of um, d3 axis bottom of x. And then the same for y. With the axis left, and then we have those scale in there, and then um, maybe a little bit more of margin in here, so I can show that value in there, and finally, like a transform in here, so with a translate of uh, on x, nothing, but on y, I want to go. Uh, with or sorry height minus margin top minus margin bottom and i need to close this one and this one i think there we go so now you have your chart with with all the elements so again the key with d3 line generators is that you need to pass accessors for x and y and when you're drawing them make sure that you're grouping the data first or that your data it's in the proper format what you want is to have like a list of elements that correspond only to that line and in this case we got it easy because all of that was sorted but usually if you don't have your line sorted then it's going to go crazy like all of the way so make sure that you sort that first okay that's how you make e3 lines